word, building a beautiful website is not enough. It has to work perfectly on every screen. With over 60% of the web traffic coming from mobile devices, if your site is not responsive, you are losing visitors before they even get a chance to explore what you offer. But the good news is, with Elementor built-in tool, making your site look great on every device is fast, simple, and fully under control. So without further ado, let's make your website responsive right away. So if you look up here in the top panel of the editor, you will see these device icons, the desktop, laptop, tablet, and mobile. This is where we can switch views and adjust our layout specifically for each screen. And here's the cool part. Elementor also gives us additional custom breakpoints, which means if you want more precision, maybe you are targeting a specific tablet size or maybe building a website for an uncommon screen width, you can do that too. Just go to the left panel, site setting, go to the layout, and breakpoints and see here you will find all the default breakpoints already set with their screen sizes and you can also customize them completely like rearrange them remove ones you don't need add your own custom device and even set its exact dimension based on the layout you are targeting now for this video we will stick with the default breakpoints but i wanted to show you that this flexibility is there when you need it Okay, now let's get into the actual layout work. So guys, we will go in the order. First, we will make our design responsive on the laptop screen, then on the tablet, and finally on the mobile. Okay, so we are using this desktop layout as our main reference. And as you can see, everything here looks clean and well arranged. Nothing is out of place and the content is in one straight line. This is exactly how we want it to look on all the devices. Now, I will switch to the laptop view and let's take a look. Alright, the first thing you'll notice is the content isn't lining up with the left margin properly, right? It's a bit off. And if you look closely, the top part, especially that header part, is stuck right to the edge. And like there is no space above it. So, here's what we will do. Okay guys, I'm going to show you how to make one or two sections responsive just to give you the idea. And you can use the same method for the rest of the sections too. Okay, so let's start with the first section. So first, I will select the container of this section. You will notice that the top margin is already set based on the desktop layout. So what I will do, I will unlink the margin values so I can set them separately. Then. I will add a top margin that gives it some space from the top. Something that looks close to the desktop version, right? Maybe 184 pixel looks good for now. Okay, now let's fix this heading. We want it to be in the same position as it was on the desktop. So again, I will unlink the margin value and adjust the left margin. This help line it up nicely. All right, 40 pixel looks good, right? Then I will tweak the right margin too, just to make sure that the heading doesn't look too stretched and still matches the desktop look. Nice, this looks balanced now. Okay, so the next up we have the paragraph text. Now for the paragraph or the description text, I'm not changing the margins. I'm going to adjust the left and the right paddings instead. Now, look. Technically, you can use margin to move content from the sides, but I feel paddings is a better choice here. Now, if I had used margins, the whole widgets or the box would have shifted and might not have lined up with the heading or the button. But since I'm adjusting the paddings, so it will only add space inside the box around the content. The box or the widget stays where it is and the content gets some room to breathe which makes it easier to read and looks cleaner. And that's it. We are done with this first section for the laptop view. Let's move on to our next section. Okay, now let's take a look at our second section, which is a feature section. So first, let's select the container. Now, if you look at the padding set for the desktop, you will notice it looks properly aligned even on the laptop screen. 
so we are not going to change it it's already looking great right other than that guys quick but important step here make sure you select each icon box one by one and set the padding and margins to zero because sometimes these boxes come with default spacing that matches with alignment like one icon sit higher another sit lower and the whole row start to look a bit off so by setting paddings and margins to zero we are keeping things clean and even all right that's it for this section everything's looking clean layout is nicely aligned so let's move on to the next part now we will make this design responsive for the tablet screen since we fixed most of the layout for the laptop screen we won't have to do much work for the tablets now and that's one of the best thing about using elementor when you make your design responsive for one screen like desktop a lot of that works helps for the smaller screens too now let's take a look on the tablet view the content is nicely aligned to the left but let's adjust the heading a little and bring it into the two lines to match our reference so i will select the heading unlink the margin and give it a 40 pixels margin from the left side i will keep the rest of the margins to zero next the heading text looks a bit too big for the tablet right so i will open the topography setting and reduce the size to match the tablet view let's go with um i guess 52 pixels yeah that's look good and matches with our reference design right now if you look at the description in our reference it should appear in two lines so i will adjust the text a little to make sure it wraps nicely into two lines and stays aligned from the left to right all right one more thing i feel like the space above the heading is too much right so i will unlink the padding and reduce just the top padding to 40 pixels that pulls the design together and make it look tighter and cleaner looks much better now right now if you look at this hero section it looks too tall for the tablet but in our reference design we should be able to see a bit of the feature section above the fold so what i will do i will reduce the height of the hero section to maybe 880 pixel yeah that fits better and now our design look just like our reference and that's it let's move on to the feature section so let's select it okay so these are some settings here mm, let's first check how this section looks on the desktop view okay so i can see that the icon box is placed a little more inward compared to the button but on the tablet view they looked fully aligned so what i will do i will adjust the icon box bring it a little inward to match the original design next i will reduce the space between the columns you know that tablet have less space across the screen so if we leave the same big gaps from the desktop it can look too unbalanced that's why we reduce column gaps for the tablet now i will adjust the first icon to look good on tablet and once that's set i will use the same setting for the other boxes it's an easier and faster way to make the whole section responsive so let's start i will adjust the icon's position make the title a bit smaller and maybe set the margins from the top and left so everything's line up properly now i will fix the margin for the description as well to keep it all looking neat guys always remember your goal is to make your design look good clear and easy to use from weird point of view that means when we design for tablet or mobile we don't just copy everything from the desktop instead we check what actually looks right and feels right on that particular screen and when we adjust things for that specific view that's what responsive design really means each screen gets its own best versions of the layout and that's what I'm trying to do here. I am adjusting the description to look clean and readable on tablet view. And once that's set, I will use it as a reference to fix the rest of the icon boxes. And here's another thing to keep in mind. Look at the title. 
they're all aligned in one room. But if you check the description, the second and the fourth box content are aligned with each other and the first and the third are aligned differently. Because the titles in the second and the fourth box are fitting in one line, while the first and the third title are wrapping into two lines. So sometimes you might even need to tweak your title to help everything align nicely across the boxes. I hope that concept makes sense, right? For now, I will leave them as they are and preview the layout. Okay now, super important tip. To check if your design is really responsive, you need to cross check it. And the best way is right click, go to the inspect in the browser, pick the tablet screen size and zoom out to 75%. That will show you how your design looks in a more realistic size. And as you can see here, it's not quite right yet. The heading and the description looks too stretched. So what I will do, I will make a few more changes and adjust everything again. Now inspect it again and make sure to hard refresh it. And there you go. Now the design looks perfectly responsive on the tablet view, right? All right, that's it. Now let's move on to the mobile screen, which is really, really important. So more than half of our website visitors come from the mobile. So it's very important that our website looks good and works well on phone. So let's quickly do that now. First, let's see how the layout looks on the mobile. Okay, as you can see, our second section looks almost perfect, but the first section needs some fixing. So let's start with that. I will begin with the heading because once that's done, fixing the rest become easier. So I will reduce the size of the heading and now I'm going to center it. Because on mobile screens, the space is small and when things are centered, they look better and more balanced. And also when your content is in center, it's easier for people to read. It gives a clean and tidy look on small screen. Now, here's a quick and easy trick. Instead of adjusting everything one by one, just select the full container and give it a 20 pixel padding on the left and right. This is a shortcut that helps your mobile design looks neat and not squished. Now, I will adjust the heading in the description, their size, spacing, and position to make sure it looks good on mobile. Like I said before, when you are making your design work on different screen sizes, there's no one fixed rule. Just keep changing small things until everything's look nice and clean. Okay, so this section is done. Let's move on to the next one. So far, everything is going well, but I feel like on the mobile, these featured boxes don't look like they're separate. And from the user's view, it's hard to tell that each one is a different box because the background is all white. So what I will do, I'm going to add a light background around each box but I will do this on desktop view. In Elementor, if you make changes on big screen like desktop, they also apply to smaller screens. But if you change something on mobile view, it does not change anything on the desktop. That's why it's better to add this background style from the desktop. So now I'm on desktop and I'm adding a very soft background color around the box. Not too strong, just enough to help each box stand out a little. Now that we added the background, I can see the boxes look a bit too close together, right? And from a user's view, it doesn't look clean. So let's fix that too. First, I will center this whole section, just like we did for the hero section. So I will select the container and give it the 20 pixel padding on the left and right, and 40 pixels from the top to give it a clean space and make sure it's not too tight. Next, I will add some space between each box so they don't look like they are stuck together. Also, the bottom part of the last box was touching the next section, which didn't look nice. So I will give it the same bottom 
padding that I give at the top. This keep the spacing even and clean. So keeping the same paddings at the top and bottom make the design look more balanced and easy to read. Next, I will adjust the height of the first section. Just like before, we want part of the feature section to show up above the fold, which means the user should see some of it without scrolling. So I also tried changing the margin above the heading, but it didn't look nice. So I'm going back to the original style. It looked better that way. And that's it. Now, don't worry, I know some of you might be thinking, wait, the image doesn't look right. It's out of place. <laughs> but don't worry, trust the process. Let's double check everything. Open your browser, right click and choose inspect. Then choose the mobile screen from the top. Zoom out to 75% and that give you a better idea of how it will look on a real phone. And there you go. Everything looks clean, neat and fully responsive on the mobile. And that's it guys. Your website is responsive across all the devices. And we didn't just resize the things. We actually optimize the layout for each screen step by step. Remember, responsive design is not just about making things smaller. It's about making them make sense on every device. Now, if you find this video helpful, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification so you don't miss any more helpful videos like this. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next.